and they say the name, you're like, I am I'm Boo Boo. And they're yeah. like, Rupert? Boo Boo? And I'm like, Boo Boo. And I'm just like, oh, God, I don't even have time for this. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, was, it definitely, in my teenage years, I was like, I don't know about this name anymore. Why settle for a horror movie when we can go and see the real thing? Do you want to hear the ghost story? They call him Rock Creep. This girl, man. This girl will take you places. <laughs> wow, it's it's like 24 hours later where we're uh, we're redoing. It's like take two because the first take had some sounds in the background. <laughs> Except I'm here now, so I'm gonna hit no video and then no no sound. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Mitch. If we need you, hey, if we need anything on like, you know, uh, taxes or anything like that, we'll, we'll call you up. You know? All right. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we should try your mic too, Boo Boo. See if it's... Is it working? Yeah. When you it's first good. got on, it was a little scratchy. Is it good now? Yeah. Maybe limit, limit movement so the hair doesn't brush against it. What if, if I do that, is that good? It's so much yeah. better. Yeah, okay. so much better. Yep. Well, let's see if the computer does the thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we, we just had like technical failure all around yesterday, you know, but it's all good. We, we, we'll, we'll do it over like, like in Hollywood. We're pretending it never happened, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <Good. laughs> How are you, are you guys are you, doing today? Good? Good, good. Are you gonna be able to use some of this stuff from yesterday, or yeah, I'm gonna use okay. some of the stuff too. I like, I, I you know, um, I'm gonna use probably a portion of it, and then like see in editing what what fits and what I can squeeze in, you know, to kind of extend it. Cool, cool, cool. We'll we'll, we'll touch up on the things of yesterday, but yeah, we'll we'll have some stuff. So, um, <laughs> how's the day going so far though today? It's good. It's busy. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Wait, is today the release day of the film or? Yeah, tonight's the premiere. Wow, where, where are you guys premiering at? Are you getting together or for like a premiere? We are, yeah, in Glendale at uh, the Lamley. Um, we've got like a 10 p.m. screening and then we're gonna hang out before and after. And Well, that's and a cool little local theater, I like it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, it's nice. I've been there before, I like it. It's right kind of in the heart of Glendale. Yeah. No, that's that's gonna be fun. You guys have anyone else from the cast coming or? Uh, everybody. Yeah. Oh, so it's gonna be like a whole family reunion again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I wish I was there. I would have swung by for sure. <laughs> Are you based in LA? Um, I was until okay. I, I'm originally from Chicago, but COVID kind of kicked me out of LA. So I came back here for COVID and now I'm like lingering here. So I'm like, oh, I'm trying to make yeah. my way to LA. Cause like legit two years, my stuff is still in storage out in LA. Like I, I have, I have basically a furnished apartment when I get there because I have like a ten by ten storage that's filled with couches and beds and everything, clothes. Yeah, yeah not bad. <laughs> yeah, so I, I better make my way sooner or later. You know what I mean? Before they throw it out. But it'll be good. Um, okay, so let's go to, to the, the important part, the ending. That no one did anyone ask by now, or, or we're still we're still safe with that about the ending. One person kind of like alluded to it, but didn't really talk about it. It, yeah, kind of intimidated no one, probably by yeah. it, right? <laughs> no one has like actually, you're the only person to really like pinpoint that specific well, moment. I think we'll go right into it. The ending. I'm telling, you, like, I, that ending was so cool because not only does it hold with you, like Boo Boo just staring into oblivion, <laughs> and it's like the longest still shot, which I loved, uh, that you don't really get because like. You, you know what I realized as a as a movie watcher and stuff, we're so used to stuff moving at a pace, like kind of a quick pace that when something doesn't happen, that's that's kind of like still on screen. It kind of freaks you out as a movie watch. Like, wait, did it pause? Did my TV pause? Did, like, is everything OK technically or like, why is this shot still happening? Uh, was that part of also the thinking there to just leave that shot, of course, before the cut actual cut happens? Yeah, I mean, there, there were a couple re reasons at play. I mean, I really love films by Abbas Kiarostomi, uh, like Taste of Cherry, and so much of those are about just long held shots where you kind of check out maybe a little bit and then you get pulled back in. And I really feel like when that happens, you like bring your experience, what you're thinking, and like you, you kind of fall more into, into the movie. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing was, you know, to sort of make a little bit of an homage to um, uh, Tchaikovsky's The Mirror. Yeah. Um, you know, just like phenomenal, like, you know, the house burns down and, and you're watching it. But but also just to kind of sit with the gravity, I mean, for the first time and and really to like double down on that one shot side of it, you know, where we you see the house burning, we're on Boo Boo, then Boo Boo leaves. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's back, you know, but there was just so much that we were able to, you know, by holding that shot, sitting so long that we were able to, um, to explore with what his character was going through. And, you know, some people have, have referred to it as, as cathartic, which was kind of surprising mm. for, for Boo Boo and I to hear. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that, that certainly, that certainly, I think, is how it felt, you know, for, for us to kind of get to the end of the film. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> eventually right it's a it's like a never-ending still scene for like five minutes basically of <laughs> one shot you know and then whose idea was it to cut so for, for those of you who stayed into the final seconds of this movie and didn't get freaked out by the stillness of it there's a, there's a cut and then the movie fades to black which was genius in a sense um who's behind that how did that hulk thing come about it that was amazing so, so we were, we had a lot of different endings up until like the, the day of, in fact, like there's a bunch of fire department there. We're like, and I'm, you know, Boomer and I are still like, how do we, you know, what, what do you think? Like this way, that way. And then, yeah. then Boo Boo had this, had this idea with like, you know, cause we wanted, we wanted it to be open-ended and sort of open for interpretation and that right. a sort of figure comes on screen and, and then, you know, that's that. And, um, and we were like, should it be rock creep? Should it be, you know, the kid? Should it be Avery? Yeah, you see a you know? silhouette. Yeah. And, um, and then Boo Boo had this idea. Yeah, I just, Rob and I had, we'd gone through so much together in making this movie and so much of Rob is in the movie itself. And it's like, for, it just felt full circle to have Rob be the one to do it. <laughs> Fourth wall right there. And yeah. I love how the actual house is burning. So you have the fire department. This is not a CGI thing. And then like yeah. it, you, when you watch it, you see a difference there when it looks very real. I love how you guys are using the actual burning house. Like you still have like whatever, 10 minutes of it. And you're trying to use the footage as B-roll and come up with different endings. That's that's genius in itself right there. Like hey, we, we still have the house that's burning to use. The fire department's still here. Let, let's figure out different endings. That's awesome awesome and you know it's crazy about that shot at the end too is like that's at the end of a long take it's not mm-hmm. like we just were like action right you, you know like the whole thing was like literally burning the house <laughs> Actually, yeah and walking around and burning the house and walking away from the house and doing the conversations and the all the emotional stuff and then coming back and the just the pacing that Rob and I like kind of got, I feel like really, really sets that tone nicely. Was there, you mentioned the different endings. Did you guys think, were you close to, to throwing in there another ending besides that one? Or was that one like a unanimous decision at the end? I, I think Scarlett Sprudota who plays, plays Avery was like, can it be me? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what a twist. Uh, like, like a sequel. Yeah. And then, and then, when it was me at the end, she was like, that I did not see coming. <laughs> <laughs> you threw off your own actor. That was not in a script, I'm guessing, right? An initial script where everyone read? Not in the script. I mean, even, <laughs> even as late as like a month and a half ago, you know, when we were d- doing final delivery for the film, people were like, are you sure? Are you sure about this ending? You know, and, and it just, it really did feel so right. I mean, for the, the reasons that, that, that Boo Boo described and, you know, just the way it came together and, you know, how often are you able to sort of make such a, a bold choice like that and sort of, you know, break, break, break the fourth wall. And, and also uh, it, it really did feel akin to like what the heart of the movie and the message and, and sort of where it came from and the personal place it came from to sort of, you know, accent at the very end. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's something charming about like breaking the fourth wall. It, it's it's like it's supposedly taboo in film. Like, but, like you at home know it subconsciously, but then when you see it, there's that sort of appreciation for it. Like I even like my interviews to kind of break fourth wall, you know, to sometimes like have little B-roll before we like start really recording or what not being used. I think people relate to that. There's something about that 
you know, kind of relatability of like breaking a fourth wall that makes it personable, right? Did you guys find that too about it? Maybe that's what played into the last shot also, just kind of like letting in the viewer who's been there for the ride, give him a, like a little special treat at the end. I, I think we'll see tonight when it shows. I mean, mm-hmm. from the people that we've seen so far, I, I kid you not, it has infuriated them beyond measure. Really? Or, or <laughs> they've loved it. They've like <laughs> loved it. It's very polarizing, this movie. Yeah. Gosh. Also the, yeah the point the point really yeah, that's, the point. <laughs> that's well yeah that's when you i'm telling you the and anything in, in, in entertainment and in performance and sports the worst reaction is no reaction it's silence you never want silence for anything but even if it's a bet it's a boo or cheer whatever reaction is you know you pulled heartstrings right there and you know you achieved something right it's always the the reaction that matters because if it's like nothing like eh, i didn't think anything of it it's like mm, then right. then it's not strong one way or the other right doesn't that we, mean something extra to get a reaction we spoke with someone yesterday who you know it was the such a heartfelt you know response to the film and and she was like you know i it was a horror movie and i found myself you know coming to tears and crying a couple parts in the movie and so it's been really interesting the way that the film is being received yeah there's so many different layers to the film and just different uh, emotional points. And like, I, I don't know, there's, yeah, I think everybody, depending on like the mood they're in when they're watching it or with the setting they're in when they're watching it will have a little bit of a different takeaway. Hmm. I know it's the best thing, you know, cause it's not going to hit any, everyone the same way. There's going to be personal experiences. that are going to come in, you know, to factor when you're watching this at different points and everyone might have a different reaction. And, the, and so I love how you guys kept the uh, ending o- open-ended in that way and added that flair to it. It's, it's a interpret yourself sort of movie, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. I mean, we, we certainly, you know, the goal was really to take people into the headspace of what it is to experience trauma, but mm-hmm. there's no real, like, you know, th- uh, there's no redemption. There's no, like, you know, ha- I wouldn't say there's no happy ending, but like, it's it's super complicated right yeah. so we wanted to like pay tribute to that uh by the end um and and so yeah it, it's it sort of leaves you which is which is i think why it was interesting that people found it have, have been finding it cathartic mm-hmm. and that phone call too uh you know with the mother at the end that was that was pretty interesting too like what happens after that to to, to the character of max right because there's options i guess now right there's this sort of in a sense reconciliation or at least an openness to it Mm. yeah and that's up to the 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 viewer really Mm -hmm. i mean who knows you know you get hit with the phone call which is random and then you get hit with the the ending (laughs) you know who knows what's gonna happen (laughs) and the beginning starts with a phone call too whatever happened to the guy too in the beginning because i kind of (laughs) forgot about him throughout the process too he's like oh yeah the cheerleader and like hype man, you know, before yeah. the date and all like, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm just thinking back at it now. Like whatever happened to him too? Well, he, he's yeah. back home. He's back home. <laughs> he's, he's away from all the, from all the, the support people. system. That's keeping yeah. sanity. Right. <laughs> yeah. We, we really tried to sort of like that. He's ferrying him onto this, this other side, you know, that, that he's yeah. there trying to sort of advocate, you know, be careful, watch out, you know, think, think about, maybe these things in different ways. And, but ultimately he's there to ferry him to the other side. And that's, you know, his final line, you know, you're, you're on your own from here. Rob, where'd you find that clear phone, that clear uh, wall <laughs> phone? I thought it was the best thing ever. I was so amazed by it. I'm like, damn, I remember those phones growing up because I kind of grew up a little bit pre the cell phone era. Um, yeah, I'm old, but that was cool that you found a clear one. I'm like, that's a badass version of an old phone. <laughs> where'd you guys scoop that thing up? Yeah, I also had them as, when I was younger. And so I was like, I want, I specifically want that phone. And so <laughs> we were able to find a clear one and then they like busted it open and like put LEDs inside of it to like make it look a little bit more like oh. it was ringing. And uh, yeah, it, it, our, our, our production and props team, I mean, just phenomenal on this film. Boo, would you ever use a phone like that or seen one in use that actually works? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm not that much younger. <laughs> you know what? Like, like I'm in my mid thirties and stuff. You guys aren't too far, but some kids will be watching this. Like they're like, what in the world are they holding on to? Or like trying to talk to, they will have no idea of it. Who grew up in the cell phone age. Right. Seriously. They, even at like urban outfitters or something, you know, they sell like the fake phones where you put yep. your cell phone in it. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that kind of like once again rob a, a little piece of reality right kind of from your own life experience that that makes it into a movie in subtle ways like that indeed i mean there's a lot of personal things i dropped all through the script yep there's, there's a wedding dress in the basement yes uh-huh. actually my mom's wedding dress oh no way oh i remember that <laughs> yeah really yeah. And, and she allowed you to use it because, you know, things could go wrong with it on the set. You know, <laughs> she had the trust in you to entrust that for well, the movie. Well, well, it's been worn by a couple people in the family who are divorced. So we thought it was really, like, <laughs> we thought it was really, like not the greatest. And so we should, you know, use it for a, a good purpose and just let that go. So awesome yeah. prop <laughs> fits into this house perfectly. The, the house of, you know, horrors in a way. Well, in that case, well done. You know, this this is a movie of this is two movies in once. First, like I was fooled that this would be a romantic drama, <laughs> maybe comedy for the first half hour. You got me, and then I didn't expect it. I'm actually, guys, going on a uh, online date tonight, so, <laughs> so careful. I, I don't know for. <laughs> I know what to look out for now. Okay. I will not be bamboozled by a bottle of alcohol or okay. an invite. I'll be very skeptical if I get that tonight. If but... she pulls out a gun in the car and wants <laughs> you to point it at her, it's probably a bad sign. Right. Yeah. We're not just like <laughs> testing things around for fun here. You know, yeah. these are warning signs I am well aware of now that I maybe wasn't entirely before this movie. So there's a life lesson for me in this too. <laughs> Uh, but I, I hope it does go kind of like the first part before the guns come out and the alcohol and the house visit. Uh, I hope it goes kind of like that for me. That was a sweet kind of date, wasn't it initially? <laughs> yeah, it, it's nice, right? I mean, we're, yeah, we're holding hands like right off the bat. Like, She's assertive as hell, which is very, so rare, you know? Very nice. I like that, you know? <laughs> She got him. She got him. You know, she got him with a charm. So, so a little fun fact is a very early draft of the script. Uh-huh. Uh, the main character was a woman, and and Avery was a was a man. The gen- gender roles were switched. Oh, and really? Some people, some people read it and they were like, "This is not believable that you know that this the dynamic girl. would happen. Yeah, that they would actually follow to the house and so on." And so, and then it sort of made it a bit more personal to to put the main character as a as a male. So. So we, we changed it and there was a draft where I literally just changed the names and ch- changed the pronouns. And then I sent it to people and they're like, oh, that's too, super believable. Totally. <laughs> you know why? Because here's the thing. Any guy would probably fall for it for a cute as hell chick invite him over. And, and a girl that's been through online dating, she ain't falling for that. Okay. <laughs> that's... <laughs> good move there rob i and then booba would have you would have been then uh wow you would have been the antagonist then right you would have been yeah i would have been evil 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 Boo-Boo. yeah max would have been a bad guy i'm guessing that <laughs> i think i think i think avery would say she's she's not she's not evil she's just in a, in a hard situation but you know that's that's ultimately why she ends up in the house <laughs> <laughs> right exactly you know that's the cool like getting Scarlett onto this, like I've been now made aware of her super cool, believable actress, very natural kind of relatable, you know, in, in so many ways, like this is kind of a girl I, I would probably go on a date with, or like hope to go on a date with, besides the crazy part, but like the, the sweet kind of like, yeah, assertive, talkative. That's cool. How much of that is actually Scarlett? Like kind of, you know, acting like she was on a real date or not, um, you know, to to bring that sort of realistic aspect to it. I thought she was very just like uh, relatable and kind of had that humanistic element to it. Yeah, I mean, Scarlett's a, a really a tremendous actress and has, has been acting for quite some time. And, um, mm-hmm. and I, I knew working with her that she would just like bring her a game that, uh, you know, she's an extremely hard worker, that she would be able to, you know, do this inside and out. And, um, and I had worked with her prior uh, in a film that I did called Strive. And, mm-hmm. um, 
and yeah, she she just has this kind of spark to her that that um, you know is it's just very interesting to to watch on screen. There's always kind of something going on. There's always something you, you, you know interesting there, and and you know the choices that she makes on each scene are, are very interesting. And so um, yeah, it, it was it was you know phenomenal to 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 put especially with with Boo Boo, you know, to put the the two of them together and and kind of see see how things unfolded. Yeah, and she like is. As soon as we like met and when she started going and we were just acting back and forth, it was she makes it so easy, you know. Did and you guys kind of hang out maybe offset to build that chemistry? Cause you know, or 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 maybe the awkwardness of like the 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 first meeting day, did you kind of stay apart until you start shooting that? We from a directing standpoint, I tried to kind of keep, I don't know if this was conscious, but like I tried to kind of keep them like at a similar interaction point to as if they had met in the film itself. Mm. Right. So there were we did a lot of zooms together you know but as far as like okay just you two kind of connect you know that was more for avery and her brother right they would go to the grocery store together they would like uh -huh. literally and grant too is, is just a phenomenal actor he, he, yes um, they got in the car together and grant immediately was like what's up sis you know what's up sis? <laughs> and establish that report it was much more important for us that they were deeply connected mm -hmm. and that boo boo was kind of like had been talking, but still a little bit of, of an outsider. Yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Cause in that case, you know, it, it plays into them kind of awkwardly meeting on a, on a blind date in that way too, you know? And, and I think maybe there's some, there's some real thing where you guys are kind of apart and then really getting to know each other, uh, you know, face to face in that way. Right, Boo Boo? Yeah, definitely. No, I, I mean, everything played into it. I mean, that, and also, you know, when we first, we're doing the first day of filming we were both like kind of nervous you know mm -hmm. which made it good because nervous to be on the date <laughs> it all just worked <laughs> makes sense yeah it did th that that house like uh, it, you know i thought of right away that that was like a carnival home you know when you go inside the mirrors the the look i i thought kind of like the the props even um and, and they had that sort of like that old kind of old 1920s feel to it or vibe to it too uh tell me what was your inspiration rob for for kind of doing that setup and even that uh you know the, the screen kind of thing where where max is watching like the old school kind of 1950s you know version of him uh that sort of thing. i thought it was like just like little tidbits like that really kind of stand out and, and you know give it an extra kind of juice to the movie what was inspiration for for that sort of look because the house had to look an intimidating sort of way instead of just making it dark like in a lot of movies like ooh, just like spider webs and that that one had a kind of stylistic view to it yeah i mean we, we really looked at like how we could speak in a language that sort of stretches reality mm -hmm. and so we turned you know a, a lot to like german expressionism yes. and, like you know nosferatu and and metropolis and and films like that, that, that brought in this sort of, yeah, like magical realism to it. Yeah. And then each of those rooms was really a different headspace of what uh, Max is experiencing. And so, you know, this, the sort of like theatric, uh, you know, him watching himself on television. Yeah. Sort of him of being like, well, what if I stay in this house? Like, what if I, you know, he had an option that he could go and he could basically join, you know, Avery and um, uh, and her brother and and continue off, right? They could be this sort of like happy family. So it's this sort of like projection of of what one decision in this uh, this ending could could be for him, um, and and sort of grappling with that and and you know and, and ultimately kind of trying to recover and and you know keep keep on his feet. Boo boo, that was that tar on you. What the hell was that? What sort of paint that you were wearing? That was like kind of freaky in a way too. That you're just owning it, you know. I was no, wondering no what, what, what what did the makeup department put on you? No, no one knows. We just found it <laughs> somewhere in Illinois yeah. and bagged it up. <laughs> it was on the wall already. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. I brought it with me actually. <laughs> no way. Wow, why don't we put this in the movie? <laughs> no, I, um, I did a lot of like. I'm so specific about things. Like I did a lot of tests actually on like it beforehand, and then ultimately got we got out there. It was it was it was basically water, uh, corn syrup, and ah. soil. And soil. Um, and it had a perfect consistency where, and actually with flour as well. 
um, so that it's sort of oozed rather than, you know. Yeah, because it had that kind of gooey look to it, you know, it felt like kind of like an oily tar, you know, it was. I, I just found a photo uh -huh. of Rob, like, mixing, we're all on the line. <laughs> the Rob, cook, like, Rob's the cook, outside. right? <laughs> Like everyone just makes, just actually for some of the handprints, it was uh, our first AD's hand. Oh, no way. Chris Janata, yeah. yeah. Chris, yeah, he would dip in, he would do that and, you know, make the marks and stuff. So, I, I, I think that day we were mixed, we were all mixing it is when, you know, there's the, the, the kind of guys in the basement. <laughs> uh, it, nobody's, nobody's mentioned that scene yet, but. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we basically had to just cover them head to toe in this, you know, black tar. And, oh uh, man! So yeah, we needed a lot of it. I love how you use everyone on set has multiple jobs. You know, like hey, uh, assistant AD, come over here. We need your hands for for imprints. You know, or whatever. No, seriously, so many times there's like our makeup artist. She like had to do feet doubling for one of our. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because with COVID, you have basically like an yeah. A zone and a B zone. And so, you know, it, and also just it's, yeah, it's so limiting in terms of the amount of people that you can have on set. And so, um, yeah, so, so at the very end, you know, Bryson had, had to go back early. Um, and so we, it, it was our makeup artist's feet. Uh, not actually Bryson's feet at the end. <laughs> Interesting. You see, I love these movie secrets, right? It's like, but, but that's that's part of being kind of a, a indie filmmaker in a sense, Rob. You, you use all the pieces on, on the board, right? In, in multiple ways that you can. Certainly, certainly, always, yep. I love that. I love that thing. Uh, Booba, I'm going to go back to you. Um, you know, your, your career has taken interesting turns, you know, and, and I think for the good, because you start out with, with franchising, uh, franchises and descendants and, and Twilight and, and you've done the big stuff, but, you know, doing movies like that uh, gives you a, a whole different kind of perspective on, on things you can do and the fun characters you can play. Um, your buddy uh, from from Twilight's Batman. <laughs> uh, imagine that. Did you imagine back in the day, Rob? You know, would have been a guy to do something like that? Because I never imagined him. He would be someone that would even want to do something like that. You know, especially when he kind of did, did like these crazy, interesting roles, like in Good Times, where he's played characters, and in all these indie movies. Uh, what level of surprise was that for you when you when you learned the news? Yeah, I was extremely surprised. I was yeah. thinking, like, I was thinking about, like, if you had told us back when we were all doing Twilight that he was going to be Batman, everyone would have been like, what? No. <laughs> 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 but, I mean, I think his departure of, like, all these incredible independent films and working with directors like David Cronenberg and, you know, all these, yeah. he's really, like, doing the right steps. And I, I love what he's doing with his career. It's one of my favorite careers to follow. I love I just watched The Lighthouse, which was absurd. Oh, that's another good one. Yeah. Yeah, that movie is amazing. It's probably one of my favorite movies I've seen in, in a while. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, after seeing him in all this, like him being Batman makes total sense. I think, and what's cool too, is I feel like he brings sort of a, uh, because he's been doing all these really great films, if he's going to do Batman, it's going to be something different and interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would just sign on to do just like a, you know, another yeah, the kind of broody. I think this is this is from what we've seen in a, in the trailers and stuff. This is a different kind of a, a more Batman that's kind of trying to find himself, like a, yeah, a younger yeah. version of a Batman that has a lot of kind of internal issues and stuff he's doing, but more like a a, a kind of a, a, I don't know, a goth would be the word Batman, but it's sort of like that a different version I've never seen. Totally. I agree. 100%. I, I think it's going to be great. I really, really do. I'm You're going to go out and see it when it comes out? Oh, yeah, I'll be in the theaters. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we're all going to be, but you know, that's the kind of thing too, you know, especially you kind of look at, look at Rob's career and do you kind of see yourself wanting to do kind of a parallel and do things like that? Cause you know, you've done like even this film, I think that's, that's kind of a, a different direction for you too, that that's something unique and different and uh, slightly darker, you know, too, but it, it's, it's so much, this character in this film had a lot of layers to it too which i like you don't you don't get that sort of stuff basically sometimes in mainstream films right yeah i mean it's it's all different but i i, I really do i love doing independent movies like i think it's so mm -hmm. much fun the freedom you have with it and the freedom you have to just like create you know without having to go through so many 
steps of like, oh, yeah. ask this person, ask this person, ask this person. Then we have to wait for the phone calls and like, well, no, tomorrow. Like, it's just like Rob and I are just like, do you want to do that? And we're like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> love that. <laughs> and you, you know, it's just fun. So like, as I just want to keep creating on a on this level and, and keep going and growing. And um, yeah, being able to play characters that are layered like this characters is why I like acting. You know, you know what I mean? Like if I was yeah. just playing just like some regular the same character over and over I would get so bored and it wouldn't be fun to show up on set so you know and you guys as friends kind of does it, it make it so much easier to just kind of running by stupid ideas good ideas by each other and just like literally you know thinking out loud and, and you know because you have a friendship and that sort of connection to create too yeah I, I I definitely think so like Rob and I are writing another film together right now and like it's so great like just tossing ideas out and just like now oh, that one didn't say no oh, that one didn't say but <laughs> like Rob always says our kind of way of writing and creating is like he'll say an idea then I'll be like okay yeah but what if this happened and then Rob will be like okay yeah what if this happened and then this happened and then we're like what if all of them happened together and we just get like, <laughs> like that's pretty much those who walk away <laughs> <laughs> hey why not push the limits right that sort of thing certainly i love that boo boo I, I you know i don't know if you've ever been asked how, you have one of the most unique names out there do you did you ever like growing up did you dislike it have you always owned it and appreciated it yeah. as unique I'm, I'm curious what's your take on your name because there's no one besides i think yogi's yogi bear and, and his counterparts have the name boo boo that stands out tell me about that name your name in general how, how have you taken it to it throughout the years yeah, no, so it's it's my nickname I've had ever since I was a little baby. Ah. And so everyone was just always calling me Boo-Boo. And uh, yeah, no, growing up, it was in school, I was called my real name. And uh -huh. then after that, I, uh, all my friends, everyone just called me Boo-Boo. And there's definitely a time in my like teenage years when I was like, oh, gosh, I did not want people to call me this anymore. <laughs> you go on, <laughs> on a date with a chick and she's like, hey. Yeah, literally like this. <laughs> or like even to the point of like, you introduce yourself to someone and they say the name you're like i am i'm boo boo and they're yeah. like R rubert boo -boo? <laughs> <laughs> what and i'm like boo boo and i'm just like oh god i don't even have time for this <laughs> but yeah it, it definitely in my teenage years i was like i don't know about this name anymore but one of my best friends we're having a conversation one night and he was like you know i think it's so cool that your name's boo boo like that like automatically like puts so much like confidence and like strength into mm -hmm. like somebody like the fact that you can be like, my name is Boo Boo. And I'd never looked at it like that. And after that conversation with my buddy, I was like, whoa, it blew my mind. And so now I love it. I love being able to say my name is Boo Boo. I and think it's like, cool. It's unique, yeah. you know, because like, you know, sometimes like with Hollywood now, I think like the, the celebrities are naming their kids into like, they're like, you know, orange apple, you know, like names like getting so ridiculous. But I think there's something unique about the name Boo Boo. And, and, and you know, and especially if you can own it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then it makes you a badass. <laughs> you know what I right, mean? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm still working there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you're there. You're past that. Don't worry. <laughs> you're definitely past that. I mean, that, that's what we know you as. I don't even know if your real name is like, your birth name is allowed to be said. Or, you know, <laughs> if you say it out loud three times when you look in the mirror, you'll disappear. <laughs> you'll be haunted to the rest. I haunt you. <laughs> well, certainly, at least I know it's not going to be in the house that went down in flames. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> you guys put that one to rest. Yeah. Well, you think you're going to do another house with a uh, house that's going to catch fire? This is what, number two? You know, this we... <laughs> Yeah, this at least a solid five before I switch uh, <laughs> genres of house burning and I move to like car explosions. <laughs> yeah, they're all like kind of country uh, wooden homes, you know, those kind of like old and uh, classic, right? Uh, kind of ranch homes too, in a sense. Well, I just, I'm a ranch guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just like i just don't like the ranch aesthetic i'm trying to burn them all down. literally you show up and it's like the worst omen for whoever's in the neighborhood like yup we're going up in flames sooner or later yeah literally if, like i move into the neighborhood there's some the neighbor has a ranch home mm -mm. <laughs> it's going down <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you live in like the opposite of it like a strong break home and all that right <laughs> i actually grew up on a ranch oh no way yeah there you go <laughs> 
which is fine. <laughs> well, probably hatred for it is <laughs> yeah. coming through. And <laughs> I can't drink it anymore. <laughs> So what's next for you guys? Anything planned? Any any trips? I mean, uh, now that the film's kind of wrapped, any any br- are you guys just taking a break or jumping into next projects? So much. Um, I mean, Boo Boo and I are, are writing a project together that we're really really excited about, and it has as, as many fires and as much craziness. As- <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, of course you got to keep up. Arson yeah, is one of your specialties, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so we're really excited about that. We'll probably announce it shortly. We're still working on the script. And um, yeah, and then actually tomorrow, so the film premieres tonight, and then tomorrow mm-hmm. I'm heading off to, to Paris. We're going to record with uh, Marion Cotillard on, on a film I'm doing called The Inventor about wow. Leonardo da Vinci. So that'll, that'll be exciting. And we, uh, we start stop motion um, animation on that um, uh, next week. So Oh, you're going to stop motion animation? Yes, indeed. That's- yes. Are you directing? Are you writing? On that one, I'm producing. We have the, producing? The, the director who um, who, write, who wrote Ratatouille. His name's Jim Capobianco. Oh yeah. Well, that's good. You get damn. You're heading off to France, you know? For like, oh yeah, I'm just casually heading off to France, you know? Damn, that's really cool. I uh, I mean, hey, it's your first time going there, or I've uh, been. On this project, I'm there like every two months. So I'm oh. going back again in March. Yeah. Jeez, man. Some of us have really fun lives, you know, and it ain't me. That's for sure. <laughs> You're in Chicago. <laughs> well, Chicago. Hey, today it's like, I shouldn't be complaining. It's 40 degrees and it feels like it's 80. You know what I mean? Like I saw people in shorts outside. Like what? this is <laughs> legit. Like they think it's like, it's 40 degrees. That's not that warm, but here it's like, wow, we have sun and 40 degrees. It's like, you better live it up. Yeah. As, as you're in Chicago and you got a date tonight. Yeah. You know? I do. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll let you, if you guys don't hear from me again, you probably can speculate what happened. You know, <laughs> we'll check the news. We'll check the news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it goes well, you know, I, hopefully she spares me on Valentine's Day weekend, you know, it doesn't, doesn't do, go too crazy, but yeah. And it's not, it's not Scarlet or Avery or anything like that. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're good, I guess. Uh, Booba, yeah, what's up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. No, Booba, uh, what's up for you? Uh, any plans? Anything's coming up for you? Yeah, I've, I've been on this. Uh, I've been on a TV show for... It, my episodes aren't out yet, but I've been working for the past few months on the show for Hulu called Good Trouble. Uh huh. I've been on that show for a bit. Cool. Um, I actually just was rehearsing this morning. Look and, at that. Uh, yeah, going uh, filming again this coming week, and yeah, things things are great. Been in the studio making music with a band, and making what, what kind of music do you play? Uh, it's like pop alternative. Oh, I like that. So we're, we're making a new little project right now and songs should be hitting soon. So. Are you guys going to tour or anything like that or put out? God, I, I hope so. I Who knows when, when, but yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Look at that. I love you guys. You're keeping busy doing work and, you know, creating fun things together, right? I mean, yeah. you, you worked on this one, so why not continue it? Why would you, if, if it's working, why would you go off the train, right? it's just we're working together we just like <clears throat> at least for me as like a, a, a writer like just I, I don't know it's just such a perfect match just like it, even boo boo coming onto this project you know like the initial questions were like well well why you know why don't you why don't you go further and i'm usually the one where people are coming to me and being like i don't think you can get away with that i don't think you can do that so to have somebody who's like let's do it let's go farther like it's, it's great it's great and uh yeah, and it just makes the the end film and, and cinema, you know, all, all the better. And Certainly a new, does. A new movie definitely goes further. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine, man. I'm not gonna even speculate anymore. I'm just gonna wait to see it and talk to you guys after when when it's put out. And I can only imagine this was probably like a little teaser in, into what's coming up next <laughs> with the next one. So. <laughs> You guys have a great time tonight at the premiere. I'm certain people are going to be taken back, you know, and uh, and you're going to have a great reaction. So I wish I was there, but uh, hey, keep on keep on doing a great work, both of you, and I can't wait to catch up on the next one. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on. It was great, great chatting. And um, yeah, people can can go out and check out the film. It's it's out, and uh, we hope hope people enjoy. Absolutely. I'll spread the word on my end, whatever I can. So appreciate it. Hey, take care, fellas. It was, it's been a pleasure. So uh, talk soon. 
Yes. Enjoy Very Paris, fun. Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun on your date. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll let you know how it went. Tell me say yeah. hi. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>